You know what I love? Food. You know what I love even more than food? Processed food. After all, who would eat a handful of dry ass chickpeas when you could put those chickpeas into a food processor with a bunch of oil and tahini and garlic and then have delicious processed chickpeas known as hummus? You know, I'm going to just need a moment alone with my hummus. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. Sorry. I'm done, I swear. So you've probably heard that processed foods are bad for you. Something I always used to hear from my fellow hippies. But more and more in the past few years, I've seen that popping up on mainstream news channels. Uh, Processed foods are terrible for your health. But here's the thing I never really understood. What makes a food processed? Is my hummus processed because it went through a food processor? And what is it about processing a food that suddenly makes it bad for you? What is it about hummus that's so much worse for you than a pile of chickpeas and sesame seeds? The answer is complicated. Uh, There is no clear definition of processing because all foods are different and they exist along a spectrum. There's no clear definition of what's processed and how that can turn a good food into a bad food. Uh, So take the chickpea example. Um, This is a chickpea as it is harvested, uh, unprocessed. Well, I mean, it's not, actually. Technically, it became processed when someone put it in a can with a bunch of salt. Uh, Adding a preservative, even one as simple as salt, that can count as primary processing. Uh, Again, not a hard and fast scientific term, but it's helpful for thinking about how easy it is to process things and how there are these different levels. Um, This chickpea though is still, despite being processed, very healthy and not a delicious meal. So then I add uh, tahini and garlic and uh, some olive oil and then I turn it into hummus and that's secondary processing. Uh, The kind of thing that does turn it into a delicious meal and maybe makes it a little bit less healthy. I mean, I have added some things to it that less healthy than a single chickpea, let's say. Um, But that secondary processing can be so many different things. It can be baking a vegetable. It can be drying out a piece of jerky. All of that counts as processing. So that's primary and secondary processing. But there's a third level at which point uh, food can be considered ultra processed. That would be, say, if we took this hummus and we turned it into patties, deep fried it, added a bunch of preservatives and put it in the freezer section of your local grocery store where you could buy it and heat it up. It's this ultra processed food that several studies have linked to poor health outcomes, including four big studies that were just published last month. One big study out of France, it was published May 19th, found that people who consumed the most ultra processed food had a 25% chance Uh, increased chance of dying early compared to people who ate the least amount of ultra processed foods. Spanish researchers did a very, like an almost identical study that found people eating the most processed food actually had a 62% increased risk of death. And another Spanish study that was published back on May 4th found that ultra processed foods may be linked with depression. Finally, an NHS study Uh, on ultra processed foods was published May 16th. That finding was that people who consume ultra processed foods consume far more calories than people eating normal food. I don't even know. You can't even say unprocessed food because it is processed. It's all so stupid and confusing. So what is it about that tertiary level of processing that suddenly makes our food so dangerous? Processing, even a small amount, uh, even that primary processing, the secondary, can change the nutrition of your food. 
For instance, your food processor, uh, when it's grinding up all those chickpeas, is doing the work that your digestive system would have had to do if you just ate those chickpeas. So you're doing a lot less work to consume more calories. It's easier to consume more calories. And that's related to the biggest issue of why ultra-processed foods can be dangerous, is that uh, I personally am much more likely to eat an entire can of chickpeas in one sitting when it is in delicious hummus form than if it's just in a can of chickpeas. Um, That could be a real negative. You know, that could force me to eat more calories without even recognizing what I'm doing. Uh, That's, in essence, what the NIH study found. Uh, People were in the study allowed to eat whatever they wanted, Uh, but one group was eating ultra-processed food and the other wasn't. The uh, people eating the ultra-processed food tended to eat much, much more of the food than the other group. And they didn't report actually liking the food more, and they didn't report knowing that they had eaten more. They just did. And then after two weeks, those groups swapped diets and the researchers found the exact same thing happened with the other groups. Ultra processed food, the people ate more of it, didn't think it tasted any better and had more calories. What is the point of that? That is a nightmare to me. I love eating a lot of stuff, but it should at least be good stuff needs to be worth it. So the NHS study is legit. If you are eating ultra processed foods, you might be able to help yourself out by just paying attention to how much you're eating. Slow down, watch your portions, don't gorge yourself. And when you start to feel full, stop eating. Uh, Sometimes people eat so fast that their stomach doesn't get a chance to tell them like, hey, I'm good until they've already eaten way too much. So if you just slow down how much you're eating, you can dodge that bullet. But what about those other doom and gloom studies? Uh, does eating more ultra processed food lead to an early grave or depression? Well, eating more calories can do that. Uh, it's the cause of a lot of different issues like cancers, heart disease, other common causes of death. Uh, but that said, these studies do have a a couple of big problems. Uh, One is that they failed to show causation. I've been very open about the fact that I suffer from depression and my depressive symptoms and what I eat are constantly in an annoying feedback loop. When I'm depressed, I eat garbage and I I eat more of it than I actually need because I think I'm garbage. (laughs) And that makes me happy for a brief moment. Um, And I don't feel like cooking. And I don't feel like eating a goddamn apple. I don't even want homemade hummus. I want a frozen pizza and a large pile of Oreos. By the way, today's video is brought to you by Oreos. Mega stuff Oreos. Why fucking bother with less fake vegan cream than your disgusting body deserves? And while I'm gorging on Oreos in my depression, I'm also not exercising at all. I'm not taking care of myself in any other way. I'm not sleeping properly. And I'm not alone. A lot of people experience depression the same way. And because of that, it's really difficult for studies like this to tease out the causation. And this is something that the NHS points out in a May 30th document they put out responding to these studies. Um, They also call out my uh, earlier point that there is no real definition for processed, which leads some of these studies to make questionable choices about what they consider processed or unprocessed. For instance, in those large scale studies that found processed foods lead to early death, they considered salami processed, but they did not consider cheese to be processed, despite the fact that it uses many of the same uh, preservatives and chemical processes. So even if you accept these studies on their face, the end effect isn't actually as large as you might worry about. A 62% increase in your risk isn't that much when the risk is very low to begin with. So should you cut out all ultra processed foods from your diet? I mean, sure, if you plan to live forever, that might be a good first step. But in the grand scheme of things, it's just not a big deal. The better advice to improve your health Honestly, I'm going to have to defer to the excellent advice of Michael Pollan. Eat food, not too much, mostly plants.
Not a single study has ever been able to refute the wisdom of that. And the good news is that that wisdom also allows for the occasional Oreo binge. 